So unfortunately, we, um, Mr. Doug Williams from Career Blake was unable to attend, but Councillor Phyllis, who is in attendance, is going to come up and um, speak a few words on behalf of the uh, Curve Lake, and then we're going to go into a break. So, Chief Phyllis, if you could make your way to the stage. If Stacy were here, he'd give you a hard knock for calling me counselor. <laughs> Where is he? He's is he? <laughs> My spirit name is White Bear Woman. I'm of the Fish Clan and I'm from Curve Lake First Nation. To, uh, standing with me is uh, Councillor Deborah Jacobs and to my left, Councillor uh, Lorenzo Wheaton. Happy that they traveled with us and uh, happy to be here. Chibiwanj. And I'd like to acknowledge the land where we meet, the place that you know as the Mississaugas of New Credit. Also, I'd like to uh, commend the, um, the drum this morning. Boy, were they powerful. Really, really good to see the youth get involved this way. And uh, we need to encourage them more and more every day. So um, yes, um, unfortunately, um, uh, my brother and cousin Doug, who we know as Elder Doug Williams, um, wasn't well enough to, to travel. He's a diabetic and he has to do his dialysis at home every night. So um, it's sad that he couldn't be here because he really, really looks forward to coming here every year. And uh, he did have everything ready, but uh, while we were getting here yesterday, we got the message that he couldn't come. So I extend my regrets, and uh, uh, hopefully he'll be here next year. So um, while, while Dave was talking, and um, a pleasure to, to hear um, Tom, you know, these two fellas really have captured the essence of our local history. So congratulations, you, you both did a marvelous job. Um, yeah. And And I, I certainly couldn't do justice to what Doug would have done here today. And, and while Dave was talking, I was madly scratching uh, words here to, to say and uh, share with you. So I'll start. Um, I've been chief for seven years. This year is our election year and I was councillor for 16 years prior. So I do know a lot about our, our recent history. Um, I worked in economic development for our community and I was also the health manager, health and social services manager. But in my uh, council life, I also had a career and worked in Ontario for um, the Union of Ontario of Indians, um, the Ontario Federation of Indian Friendship Centers. So I did get experience all over Ontario. Um, and Doug being the um, knowledge keeper as we refer, uh, language teacher, He's also a, a, historic, a historian, as you know. Um, he was a chief at one time. And he's also known as uh, the representative of the Bullfrog case. And I'll, I'll encourage you and tease you for you to look that up because it was quite a historical undertaking uh, with his friend, uh, Wayne Taylor. He's also wrote a book about his lifetime and his uh, reflection of being with uh, the elders. And it's quite a, a good, good story uh, in itself, smaller stories. And it, it really captures some of the life that we all know. 
Uh, I keep going back and forth here. So when Dave talked um, in early years, our community was known as Mud Lake. So uh, in, in more, uh, as things progressed, we, we came to be known as, as Curve Lake. And rightfully so, because we are the curve in the lake. Uh, we are a peninsula uh, um, between Buckhorn and Shimong Lakes. We have acreage of 2,562, which includes fee simple lands, which is ironic in itself that we're purchasing our own, our own lands. So we're in the process of uh, changing that into uh, reserve land, and uh, hopefully very soon, you know how government uh, moves, it's very slow. Um, we have a population, total population of about 2,335 people, uh, and we have about 900, give or take, that live on territory. We have uh, people who own uh, certificates of possession along the lake shores mostly, and they lease those properties. So our households um, uh, total about 580. 350 of those are our First Nation owned. We boast of entrepreneurs and business owners who in their selves have, have accomplished much. We have a country style uh, coffee shop uh, within a, a, a gas station and we're building a, a, a Tim Hortons uh, coffee place um, with another uh, super gas store. Uh, we have We also have some uh, gas stations on the water for patrons of those boaters and ones who are on the lake. We have the uh, world-known Weetongs Arts and Crafts Center that's been there for a lifetime, over five generations. That's, that's quite a story in itself. Um, we have some consultants right on territory, our, our own members. Uh, namely, Cambian uh, Consultants and Sierra Quet um, Consultants. We have another craft shop uh, that's uh, known as the Trading Post. Our First Nation employs well over 120 people. Um, we have our own First Nation school up to grade three, and then they're bused off territory. Um, we also still have the original Indian Day School on, on territory, which one of them is our, our uh, government, government services office. We have a licensed uh, early learning center uh, for 91 children. Um, we're also co-partnering uh, with Parks Ontario and, and the um, Petroglyphs, uh, Peter of Petroglyphs near the First Nation. Lorenzo holds that portfolio and he has done very well for us. Um, we know them as the Teaching Rocks. Kino, Kino Maga Awabakam. Um, Tom mentioned the islands of the Trent that we settled the claim for. Uh, we, Curve Lake is currently in a, in a flooded claim for the drawn land around our peninsula, our community. And ironically, and although we're surrounded by water, we're, all, we're a boil water advisory community, sadly. But we're on the list. Uh, I also recognize that Elder Murray Wheatum, who is Lorenzo's father, uh, he's our only surviving World War II veteran and God bless him, his spirit is, is good, he's well. Um, he's 97, 97 years young. Um, and, and, and I did write here, we don't thank our veterans enough, and we should, each and every day. 
Um, and our history says, uh, you know, if it wasn't for the, the victory of the 1812 war, we'd probably be part of the United States. And do we really want that in these days? Um, we have a cultural center. Um, we, we feel like we're, we're, we're not big enough in that regard. Uh, we like to preserve our history. We have uh, acquired some of our sacred items, and I don't believe we have enough space, so we have to really do something about that. We've also started to um, can't uh, can't uh, develop uh, DVDs, which is a good way of, of stop telling your story. Um, and yes, I, uh, I was I normally would have our DVDs in our car in my car. And my husband says, do you want this box in the car? And I said, no, I won't need it. You see? He was right, I should have uh, brought them. But we call one Ashkigamam, which is the story of our community. Um, another one is about the treaties. And we have a very new one that we're launching, which is a project between um, the youth and elders. And it's their engagement. And, and how the elders uh, have achieved any challenges or struggles that they've had. So it's about storytelling, but it's also inspiring the, the youth to, um, to look ahead, to be positive, and you know, uh, give all the good reasons to, to have a good life. Um, I, might, I might also mention that um, Elsie Knott was our first woman chief in Canada. And at the same time, my grandmother became the top counselor, uh, defeating several men. So this was a time when women were just first allowed to run for political office. And uh, I, I just needed to mention that because, you know, there's role models in your life. And Elsie Knott, my grandmother, and mentioning Doug Williams, they are um, my role models. Uh, went in? Oh yes, in Curve Lake we have the National Lands uh, Association office. Deborah's sister actually uh, founded that office for uh, uh, Canada. So that's uh, quite a feature too. Um, we're very active partners with the Peterborough Canadian Canoe Museum in Peterborough. Deborah is on the board of directors for that. We're also good friends and, and colleagues to uh, Trent University now for 50 years. Um, and Trent University being the third in quality, I guess, in, in Canada. <laughs> and they're the first to have the uh, Indigenous Studies program. So I did bring these two up here for a reason because I do forget, and uh, if there's anything I have forgotten or, or you want, might want to mention, please do so. Oh boy, a microphone. <laughs> Information that they delve into and research and look up and read and digest and process for all of us is hurtful information. I want to plant in your minds to think, how is this history going to change me so I can change that? Because if we don't turn it around, it's a government that doesn't like us to come in here and tell us what we're going to do. And we can't have that anymore. So let's listen to our history, and let's use it, and we can see. And those are the words that I have to leave you with today. Miigwech. I just want to remind of our sacred duty to look after our babies, to look after our children, because we don't get them 
for a long time. Make sure that uh, they're look, well looked after, well loved. Make sure you give them lots of hugs and, and lots of um, love. And, um, and I just, you know, hope and pray that all, the, all our beautiful children and our, our old people um, are in safe hands. And um, that's all I have to say. Miigwech. For Chief Williams. <laughs> <laughs> yes.